Hi, welcome to Educator.com. For our first lesson, we're going to have a quick introduction to the course. So what's this course called? Depending on the school you attend, this course goes by a wide variety of different names. Pre-calculus, math analysis, it might be called math analysis with trigonometry, simply trigonometry, it might be called pre-calculus and trigonometry. It could be called algebra three, it might be called geometry two, it might be called algebra three and geometry two. It might be called college algebra if you're in a college course. It might be called college algebra with trigonometry and it might be called something different from all of these. It's got a lot of names, sadly. Still Still, all these different names imply basically the same set of concepts. Those that are essential for science classes and those that form the necessary foundation for calculus if you decide to continue in math. Those are all the concepts that this course on educator.com will work through. So how do the lessons work? Each lesson starts off by introducing the concepts. We'll make sense of the ideas involved and we'll see how they connect to what we previously learned. After we have a sense for what we're working on, we'll learn how to apply these new concepts. Whether it's through new formulas or methods for solving problems or just a new way of thinking, we'll come to understand how to use it. Not only will we learn how to use the concepts though, we'll also learn why they work and why they make sense so we can do more than just do problems, we can also actually understand what's going on and work on stuff down the road with that. Finally, we'll end each lesson by working through a wide variety of examples so we can see the concepts in action. Plus, most lessons will contain at least one word problem to help us see how to apply math in the real world. Who is this course for? In short, anyone who needs help with the concepts contained in this course. This course was designed and created with many different types of students in mind. It's for those who are taking one of those previously mentioned classes and who just want some extra help. It's also for people working on the material but who aren't taking a formal class at a school. And anyone who just needs a refresher on the concepts, whether it's for science class or another math class that they're taking. Because the lessons combine an understanding of the material with step-by-step -step working through examples, this course is great for students with diverse needs. It can help a whole bunch of different people because it really teaches the whole thing. When watching lessons, some students will just skip straight to the examples and only watch enough so they can do their her homework. I want to urge you against doing this. While this can work for getting homework done in the short term, it quickly falls apart in the long term. So much of math builds upon previous ideas. If you don't really understand what's happening now, understanding later concepts will be extremely difficult. Because so many things are built stair step after another, if you don't really understand what's happening today, you might be able to get through the homework, but getting through other work in a couple of months is going to become really, really difficult. It might become almost impossible. The best thing you can do for your future understanding is to focus on more than just doing homework problems. Watch the whole lesson and make sure the concepts are truly clear to you. You really want to have an understanding of everything that's going on, not just how to do problems. This helps not just today, but down the road as well. This gives you the ability to understand what's going to happen in a few months or a few years. And of course, if you already understand the concepts and you just want some guidance on doing the problems, by all means, skip away. But if you don't quite understand what's going on, you don't really see how the concepts work, try to watch the whole lesson because that will give you a much better understanding of how those examples work. It's like the difference between teaching someone to fish and just handing them a fish, right? You can either teach them a skill for the rest of their life that they can use as long as they need it, or you can just feed them today. If you wind up only going to the examples, you're able to eat today, but you won't necessarily be able to eat in the long term. And I want to teach you as much as I can so you you can really understand and eventually be fine without needing any outside help. By the same token, it's so important to understand the ideas that have come up in previous math classes. We'll do a fair bit of review in this course, but occasionally that won't be quite enough sometimes. I've taught many students who understand the material they're currently working on, but they keep missing problems because they don't fully understand past concepts, things that they've learned previously. They get the new stuff, all the new stuff that they're working on, it makes sense, they get the ideas, they can do the problems, but these old ideas like canceling negatives or working with fractions, things like that, just keep popping up and they screw them up and they wind up not being able to get problems, not because they don't get the big, new, complicated idea, but because they don't get this old little thing that they never quite fully worked out back then. If you find yourself having similar problems, go back and relearn whatever is giving you trouble. You've got access to all of educator.com here. That's a great resource. You've got all this material and other courses at hand so you can easily review whatever winds up giving you trouble now. If you notice
notice that you keep missing the same kinds of problems, you keep making some mistake with some specific thing, search it up on educator.com and try to relearn that portion. Once you've got that under your belt, you'll be able to stop making mistakes on that and you won't have to worry about those things catching you up. It's not necessarily all about not understanding what's happening today. You might understand perfectly what's going on in the things you're learning right now, but because of this one little thing you didn't fully understand previously, it keeps tripping you up. But if you go back and relearn it, you'll be in a great position. For everyone, I highly, highly recommend starting off by watching the two lessons here. Lesson number two, sets, elements, and numbers. And lesson number seven, idea of a function. The concepts in these two show up all over math, and some teachers don't do a very good job of explaining them, sadly. Since they're so important and so common, I want to make sure that they make sense to you as soon as possible. So I really want you to have the chance to watch these early on so that the later things that build on these ideas make as much sense to you as possible. Also, if you have difficult with word problems, check out the fifth lesson, unsurprisingly named Word Problems. Not a terribly creative title, but Word Problems is this lesson that will help you see how to understand word problems and how to approach them. It will build this framework for approaching all word problems. That's something that you can start using on anything where you're having difficulty seeing how to set it up. If you don't have time to watch any of these right now, that's perfectly okay. Just try to come back and watch them in the next couple of weeks. These ideas are crucial, and it will make a lot of things easier later on once you've got a good understanding of them. It's not something you have to get done instantly, but by having it done as soon as you can, you'll wind up being able to understand later things much easier. If you had difficulty in previous math classes, if math class has been a little difficult for you, you might want to watch the first seven lessons because they form a review of important concepts. Lesson number two, sets, elements, and numbers. Number three, variables, equations, and algebra. Four, coordinate systems. Five, midpoint, distance, the Pythagorean theorem, and slope. Six, word problems. Oh, I guess that should have been the sixth lesson previously. Sorry about that. Lesson number seven, idea of a function, and lesson number eight, graphs. The ideas in these lessons form a foundation for much of the course. If you can make sense of them, you'll be in a good position for understanding what comes later on. So you really want to make sure these ideas make sense to you, because if they don't quite make sense to you right now, later stuff's going to be really hard. But we'll do a lot of review in these beginning important, uh, these beginning review pieces so that they'll give you the chance to really understand what happens later on. At the end of this course, there's an appendix all about graphing calculators and graphing programs. But just because it comes last, just because it comes at the end of the course, doesn't mean you should wait to watch that thing. You should watch it as soon as you have the chance, as soon as you're interested in it. By this stage in your mathematics career, you might be considering purchasing a graphing calculator, or you might already own one. The appendix will help you get started. It has recommendations for buying one, it goes over the basics of use, and it explores some of the more advanced abilities for graphing calculators. And even if you don't want to buy a graphing calculator, even if you know for sure you're not going to buy a graphing calculator, just don't feel like spending the money, I recommend checking out the first lesson in the appendix. We start off that lesson by actually looking at a bunch of free options, and it can really help to know that these things are available and that you can have them on any computer really, really easily. Having access to a graphing calculator, something that you can graph with, can make a lot of problems a whole lot easier, and it helps you really quickly build up an intuition that just doing these things by hand can't get you very quickly. So I really recommend check out that first lesson, see some of the free options, even if you aren't interested in buying a graphing calculator. Finally, what do you want to watch at the very end of the course? At the end of this course is a short section that gives a preview of calculus. Some classes, some math classes at various schools, will work through this section, but others will simply skip it. Either way, if you eventually plan on continuing the calculus, I recommend watching it at some point. Being exposed to the ideas of calculus before actually being in a class, before actually making it to a calculus class, can really help things click into place later. Plus, calculus is really cool. I think calculus is really interesting to learn about. You'll probably want to watch it once you've worked through most of the rest of the course, though, since it builds on previous ideas. So it's useful to have that foundation already there before you watch it. And of course, you should still feel totally free to watch this, even if you don't plan to take calculus. I think this stuff is really interesting, and it gives you a chance to watch this stuff and be able to understand something that you might not get exposure to otherwise. I think calculus is really cool. So if you're a little bit interested, even if you don't think you'll take calculus, you might want to check it out because it's really cool stuff. 
All right, that finishes it for this. We're done with our housekeeping, so now that you've got a sense for how the course works, let's dive into it. I hope you enjoy this course and learn a lot. I put a lot of effort into this to give you the best understanding of the concepts that I possibly could, and I'm looking forward to teaching you. All right, let's go. I'll see you at educator.com later. Bye.